In his book of appetite for America, Stephen Fry first covers Harvey's early years from his 1853 arrival in New York, and he ventured into food service and joined railroad travel as an agent in 1862, where he noticed that the food and service a train served was awful. Meals had to be paid for in advance. They were overpriced and leftover meals often were then sold to other passengers. He thought he could do this business better. According to Stern, Harvey started operating three eating houses along the Kansas Pacific Railway with his partners, then decided to go out on his own and offered fine dining to rail passengers at announced stops. He first approached his employer, but the Burlington Railroad turned him down. According to Katrina, Harvey opened his first dining room in Topeka in 1876 with his servers called the Harvey Girls. The change the West by revolutionizing how food was served while maintaining classy places to eat. Only those young women who passed an extensive background checks into their private lives were allowed into training program. Each Harvey House restaurant employed about 30 girls and they worked 6 and 7 days a week, usually 12 hours a day. Also fresh food like fresh fish, oysters and the finest beef and freshest vegetables were served in every Harvey House with an affordable price for all. According to Whitney, Harvey died in 1901 and his son Ford took over the company operation. He proved to be an even better manager than his father and greatly expanded the company operation and its success. His main interest was the American Southwest centered on the Grand Canyon home of the company's L Tower Hotel. Ford also established beautiful hotels in La Fonda in Santa Fe and helped to foster awareness of the region. Company was at its peak by the first decade of the 20th century. Then Ford's son, who was a pilot, took over the management in 1928 after his father's sudden death. He added an airline component to the company, but the company struggled and Ford's brothers took over the company operation in 1936. But company couldn't survive with the combination of Great Depression and increased travels by automobiles and airplanes. Appetite for America surveys the company's entire amazing 90 years run from 1876 to 1966. Along the way, Freight offers much more than just the details of the company. Freight discusses the history and the significance of the Harvey girls. He also points out that the Harveys were the first to use branding and it's considered the founding father of the American food service industry. Fred Harvey and his family were instrumental in developing the Grand Canyon as a tourist attraction. However, set of problems limits the effectiveness of the book. Mayus argues racist attitude of the company was not addressed adequately. Despite its large number of establishments in the Southwest, women of colors were not hired as Harvey girls until very late in the company's history. Mayors think workplace experience of the staff is glossed over. Harvey girls had to work 7 days and 12 hours a day. This was an extreme situation for a woman in the workplace and they were paid only $17 per month. This was a very low salary, relatively. I think while, while Harvey opening a workforce doors for women, he exploited their services too. Finally, Freight never discussed about reasons for company bankruptcy. Instead, he holds automobile revolution, Great Depression, and airplane industry responsible for companies collapse. I think this happened clearly because companies didn't have an innovative vision to tackle the market trends. So Ford's brothers drove the company towards a disaster. In short, Fred Harvey introduced an amazing business model, allowing disciplined women to earn their bread and butter with a top-class restaurant service to customers. His son, Ford, brought the company into the next level. Thereafter, none of Harvey's relations helped for company's survival.